Hey guys, this is John with Forward Talk. I want to come and talk to you today about a very important issue. And it's important because a lot of people struggle deeply with the issue in the text of Scripture that I'm going to be discussing today. And I am here uh, to refute the fear. Well, that kind of rhymed, didn't it? I am here to refute the fear. But before we get into refuting fear, I need you to press that subscribe button. And I need you to hit the notification bell to help us get to 600 subscribers, which is our next milestone in our journey. And uh, if you would like to support the channel, if it is anything I have produced, talked about, has been an encouragement or a blessing to you, would you please consider supporting our channel with the Cash App link in the description. Also, now there are some options for you to support us on Patreon, and uh, I will have that link in the description as well. Okay, now to refuting the fear. We're going to be talking about the subject of blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. And uh, this, of course, has been an issue for many people over the years that have been afraid that something they have said or done has constituted blasphemy against the Holy Ghost, and therefore they can never be saved or never get right with God again. But I'm here to tell you that that is not the case. And even if you struggle with that, or even if you do not struggle with that, chances are that you know someone who has struggled with that or is, is struggling with that, or you, know, you will know someone who is going to struggle with that in the future. And I want to equip you to refute the fear as well. Uh, the reason why I can so confidently refute the fear is I think the context of uh, blasphemy against the Holy Ghost makes it explicitly and, and specifically a Jewish sin, and especially that of the Pharisees, but a Jewish sin of rejecting Jesus uh, as the Messiah and attributing the works that he did by the power of the Holy Spirit to that of Beelzebub, Prince of Devils. So I'm going to share my screen with you, and we're going to look at that text for just a moment and uh, take a look at the context here, which is very important uh, when you are dealing with a text of Scripture and interpreting Scripture. So before we before we do get into that text of Scripture, uh, I am going to need you <laughs> to do me a favor. For just a moment, put put aside every every preconceived idea that you have about blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, what you think it is, and what you think it is not. And let's take a look at the text. So if you go all the way to the top of Matthew chapter 12, you will see Jesus is repeatedly <clears throat> dealing with the Pharisees. And specifically in the context of uh, the, the text under consideration that is blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. In Matthew 12 and 24, uh, it says, When the Pharisees heard it, uh, they said, This fellow doth cast out devils by Beelzebub, the prince of devils. And so Jesus had just cast the demons out or the devil out of a man that was blind and dumb. And he did it so good. I like how, how the King James said it. He... Uh, they brought unto him one possessed with the devil, blind and dumb, and he healed him, insomuch that the blind and the dumb both spake and saw. So he healed him so good that he spake and saw. And the people were amazed and said, Is this not the son of David? The Pharisees, of course, when they heard it, said, This fellow, this guy, is casting out devils by the devil himself. Beelzebub, prince of devils. But Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself cannot stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. And then how then shall then his kingdom stand if it's divided against itself? Verse number 27, Jesus said, And if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, he said, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, or the Holy Ghost, or the Holy Spirit, 
then the kingdom of God has come unto you. And of course, that's what Jesus was doing. He was casting out devils by the prince or by the, the spirit of God or by the Holy Ghost. And so, therefore, the kingdom of God had come to them. He said, or else how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he first bind the strong man and then he will spoil his house. And of course, this is a very important uh, verse of scripture for another topic that we're, we're not going to discuss today. But Jesus is here claiming that by casting out devils, he has bound the strong man. He that is not with me is against me. He that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. Wherefore I say unto you, All manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh the word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. So this blasphemy against the Holy Ghost is unlike every other form of blasphemy in that every other form of blasphemy can be forgiven if one repents. Obviously, that's the implication. You're not going to be forgiven if you don't repent, but if you do repent uh, of every manner of sin and blasphemy, you will be forgiven. So um, I think it's important to hold uh, in our minds the idea that repentance is a precondition for uh, forgiveness. So he's saying that if you repent, that's necessarily implied, you will be forgiven. But if you blaspheme the Holy Ghost, you will not be forgiven. And I think that uh, also includes the idea that even if you were, were to repent, that you would not be forgiven. Not in this world, even in the world to come. Or else the contrast makes no sense whatsoever. So, Whosoever speaketh the word against the Son of Man, it will be forgiven, it shall be forgiven. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, but in the world to come. So in the context of this verse, of this, of this text of Scripture, Jesus was addressing Pharisees who were rejecting him as Messiah on the basis that he was casting out demons by the prince of demons, instead of by the power of the Spirit. They were attributing the works of Jesus to devils rather than to the Holy Ghost, when indeed he was doing the works that he did, and specifically casting out devils, he was actually doing it by the power of the Holy Ghost. And so when they said it was demons, that the uh, Beelzebub, the prince of demons, by which Jesus was casting out devils, that was speaking against the Holy Ghost. And so this is blasphemy against the Holy Ghost, and it was in particular referring to Jewish Pharisees. Now, I find this important. In the Gospels, in, in uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, is the only place that you will find uh, any reference to blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. It does not appear in any of the epistles. It does not appear uh, anywhere from the apostles. In this context is the only place in which the idea of blaspheming the Holy Ghost comes into play. So Paul never addresses it to the church and warns them of blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. Peter never warns the church or Christians against blaspheming, blaspheming the Holy Ghost. Peter or any of the, of the other uh, um, uh, writers of the epistles warn even unbelievers of blaspheming the Holy Ghost. And so nowhere else is this concept of blaspheming the Holy Ghost mentioned in the New Testament. If it was something that was so important that Christians had to worry about blaspheming the Holy Ghost, or even unbelievers had to worry about blaspheming the Holy Ghost. If, the, if it was this thing so important that you could never, ever be forgiven of it, I would you would think that the apostles in, in their writings uh, of their letters to the churches would have mentioned blasphemy against the Holy Ghost, but not one of them does. The only place 
that blasphemy against the Holy Ghost is mentioned is in the context of dealing with uh, Jews and specifically Pharisees who were attributing the works of Jesus to uh, the devil, the works of Jesus in casting out demons um, to, uh, to the devils rather than to the power of, of the Spirit. I also think it's important to note that when Jesus said that, there, there was a world to come in which sins could still be possibly forgiven, but not the sin of blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. Or an age, not, not necessarily a world as in the cosmos, the created order, but he was talking about an age in which sins could still be forgiven, an age to come for them in which sins could still be forgiven, but theirs would not be forgiven if they blasphemed uh, the Holy Ghost by speaking a word against the Holy Ghost or by saying that Jesus cast out devils by the prince of devils. Now, if that is referring to our present age, if if the verse where Jesus says, shall not be forgiven in this age or in the age to come, if this age in that text refers to the age in which we live and the age to come refers into the refers to the next age for us presently, then that doesn't make any sense. The, the next age for us right now, the next age for us is the resurrection. It's, it's, the, it's, it's uh, eternity. It's, it's the future beyond the resurrection. Let me ask you, in, in the future, after the resurrection, at the coming of Christ, which is the, the next age to come for us, nobody's sins are going to be forgiven then. You're, you will have been judged the, the, the issue of, of sin will have been settled. So no, nobody's going to be forgiven of sins in the age to come. Those that are going to heaven will not need forgiveness of sins uh, in the age to come because they will have been resurrected and glorified and with Christ um, forever in the, in the presence of, of the Lord. And those who are going to hell, I don't think most of you are going to say uh, those that are in hell are going to have their sins forgiven in the world to come. And so uh, in this age or the age to come, this world or the world to come, doesn't make sense if this age is the present age. But it does make sense in that when Jesus said that to the Pharisees, they were in an age that was prior to the fullness, uh, full inauguration of the kingdom. Or, or uh, in lack of uh, better terms, in terms that perhaps some of you, particularly you dispensationalists, uh, can can hang on to the church age, the age uh, of the fullness of the gospel uh, that began probably with the ascension of Christ, but at least by Pentecost. So the age then was still the uh, a previous age, a, a Jewish age, an Old Testament an age, at at least an intermediate age between the Old Testament. Uh, and the New Testament being fully inaugurated uh, by the death of Christ. You know the verse in Hebrews about uh, a, test, a testament is a force uh, until the testator is not in force until the testator dies. So um, they were in an age that we are not in. We are in, an, we are in their age to come. Our present age was their age to come that Jesus spoke about in that in that particular verse. So again, uh, that means to me that the sin of blasphemy was a sin that was committed in the previous age by Jews who rejected Jesus as Messiah and attributed his casting out devils to the prince of devils. I hope today, brothers and sisters, that this helps you. And if you are a backslider, and if you are someone that that has failed and has, has fallen uh, deeply away from uh, f from what you've known, I want you to today, I want to refute the fear. I want to rebuke the fear that, that if it's trying to plague your mind, if it's trying to trouble your mind, I want to rebuke the fear today out of your soul that you have blasphemed the Holy Ghost. You have not blasphemed the Holy Ghost. The Father is still calling you. The Father still loves you. The Father wants you to come back home. And so take what I'm saying today into your spirit. Read the context for yourself. And if you're the person that's 
constantly holding blasphemy of the against the Holy Ghost over someone's head, maybe your child's head, maybe people that, that in the church that you pastor, please stop that because I do not believe that you are interpreting this text properly and you are placing unnecessary fear that could drive people away from um, the Father's house, drive people away from coming back into the house of God because they fear that they are blasphemed the Holy Ghost. And perhaps you've been a catalyst to convince them that they have blasphemed the Holy Ghost. And so they see no hope of coming back uh, to the Father, coming back to the house of God. And so, but if, if you are struggling or if you know someone who is struggling, send them the link to this video. Watch this video. Read the context of that verse. Blasphemy, blasphemy of the Holy Ghost is not something that you can accidentally do. It's, I don't even believe it's something that can be done in this age based on the reasons that I just gave. But it, it, it certainly isn't something that you can just accidentally blaspheme the Holy Ghost. You did something that, uh, that, that was very sinful and, and you failed in a major way in your life and you're, you're stressing that you blaspheme the Holy Ghost. No, no, that is not what blasphemy against the Holy Ghost is. And I think if you take an honest look at this text and let the scripture speak for itself, applying the principles of hermeneutics, who was speaking, to whom was he, he speaking, what was the issue under consideration being addressed? When you apply the principles of hermeneutics to this text, I think you will come away saying that because it's only addressed to Pharisees or only addressed to Jews because it was in the, the previous age, because it's never addressed by the apostles, because it's never addressed to the church or even unbelievers in any of the epistles or the book of Acts, that it's not a sin that can be committed by uh, someone in the present age. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't be concerned about uh, attitudes and speaking negatively about God or the work of the Spirit, uh, because you should. It's, it, you shouldn't s say things and speak against the, the work of the Spirit or the power of the Spirit of God. You, that's, that's a very stupid, let me just put it that way, a very stupid thing to do. But if we're taking this text under consideration and applying it to uh, principles of hermeneutics to it, it's not some easy thing to do. It's not something that you can just hold over people's heads and threaten uh, threaten their their security, their their peace, and, and manipulate them into doing what you want to do because you're, you're threatening them with blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. You better not do that. You better not say that. You better not go there. You better not leave this church because if you do, you, you might blaspheme the Holy Ghost. No, that is not the case at, at all. So uh, I'm here today again I am here to refute the fear. I'm here to refute the fear. God still loves you. God still wants you to be saved. I don't care how far you've gone. Uh, I don't care what you have done. I'm here to tell you in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, the Father wants you to come back home. The Father still wants a relationship with you. All right, if you agree comment, let me know that it's been a blessing. If you do not agree, then I want you to also comment. Tell me the reason why you don't, don't agree. I admit that I could possibly be wrong about this, but I don't believe that I am. I believe the context uh, uh, of this verse and applying the principles of hermeneutics uh, will lead one to, to the view that, that I am telling you today. But if you disagree, leave, leave, leave a comment section. Get the conversation started. Uh, leave a comment in the comment section and let's talk about it. All right, until the next Forward Talk, God bless you today. And, and thank you for join, joining us again as we continue to reverse the silence through Forward Talk. All right, guys, God bless you and have a great day.